Hi, and welcome back to another unboxing with Prickly Pear Camera. My name's Kevin, and today we are on video number six of a giant $2,000 untested camera and camcorder a lot that I purchased. We've already gone through nine boxes in this series and we are at a total value of $4,474 for estimated sales that we will make off of this order. And our target for all 14 boxes is $6,000. I haven't gone through any of these so I'm seeing them for the first time just like you are. And I'm excited to get started with box number 10. And whether you've seen some of the other videos or if you're new here, hi, I hope you enjoy these. My full-time job is actually buying and selling used digital cameras, camcorders, and film cameras. Although this is a small part of my overall job, I, it's actually the funnest. I enjoy this the most, is buying unsorted lots, testing them, seeing if we can get some value out of them, and ultimately recycling cameras that have been sitting in someone's house probably for years and years and years. Let's see what we got in this first one here. Okay, it is stuffed to the brim. The seller that I bought these from didn't actually uh, provide a whole lot of packing material. Fortunately, there's so much in them, they didn't jostle around very much, and most of them have been in decent condition. So this is what the box looks like. It looks pretty decent. It looks like almost all digital cameras, and it's rather heavy, so I think we've got a lot of stuff to go through here. We pulled some gems out of the last box, the box number nine in this series. Um, really, really great value and some cool cameras in there. And I'm hoping that uh, box number 10 is gonna provide some cool stuff too. So let's jump in with the first camera. Canon PowerShot A570, which is a AA power Digicam. The battery compartment looks good. It's the biggest issue that I see uh, whenever I am testing AA power digital cameras is that the battery compartment often has a lot of acid residue from a battery that exploded or was kept in there for too long. So this camera does power on. It's a great start. Lens looks decent. Noisy, noisy lens, which is very common with Canon power shots of this age. This camera was made like 15 years ago, so I'm just happy that it turns on and appears to be working. Now I'm gonna test it with a memory card. If, I, if able to, I do try to test uh, the cameras and camcorders that I sell with the memory type that they use because sometimes in rare cases that memory uh, receptacle has been damaged and no longer reads the memory that it was intended to read. So that's why I'm testing it with a memory card. Nice. All right. Yeah, this camera's in uh, decent condition. The LCD has a little bit of wear and that does affect the value a little bit but it's in uh, good working condition. So if you pair this with AA batteries, a USB cable, and a memory card, the value on this is pretty decent. It's gonna be about 50 bucks. Moving on. This camera actually brings back a lot of memories, really good memories. Um, my grandpa who passed away a few years ago now, uh, this was the same exact model that he used for many years. Uh, lived in Oklahoma with his wife and um, would send me pictures from time to time and after he passed away I ended up getting his camera. Um, so definitely means a lot um, and it it uh, brings back a lot of memories when I see this model. And this is a bridge camera with a 24x optical zoom. Uh, really kind of a cool camera. Often has the battery corrosion issues that are common with AA batteries. In fact, my grandpa's did at the end, so that looks good. I'm gonna put some AA batteries in it and we'll put in a memory card and see how it works. But as you can see, it's in pretty decent condition. It does turn on, so we're at the menu right now. The lens moves out and I will try to take a picture. Nice. Yeah, so this is in uh, good working condition. So with these untested lots that I get, uh, and I bought from the supplier a number of times, I would say on average about a third maybe, a half to a third of the cameras and camcorders don't work for a variety of reasons. Either they just don't power on, they have defective screens, they have defective lenses, a variety of reasons. Um, so to have two out of the two to start to work is a really nice start. Uh, this camera's in good working condition, just needs to be cleaned up a little bit. 
And the value on this camera with AA batteries and a card is going to be similar value to the last one actually, uh, about 50 bucks. My grandpa was um, one of the most fundamentally decent people that I ever met. And um, the thing that I remember about him the most is just that he had a twinkle in his eye. When he looked at you, you could just feel that he was listening to you and was engaged in the conversation. And um, I miss him, and I think about him a lot. All right, next camera. Ooh, Panasonic Lumix. We haven't had too many Panasonic so far in this box. Oh, and it powers on too. Wow. Lens looks decent. Oh, just turned off. Yeah, so normally if you do have a untested camera that you get and you power it on, normally the batteries are close to dead and in this case they were. AA batteries, this uses regular SD cards. And a lot of the times these cameras, older cameras, won't use the high capacity current memory cards that are available, like 32, 64, 128 gig. They're just too large and they're not the right uh, SD type. So I try to use smaller size cards. In this case, I'm using just a 512 mag card and this works in most cameras. Neat. It looks good, lens is moving out smoothly. I don't see any issues with uh, dust visible in the pictures and the flash fires. Three for three start, wow. Just deleted the picture. Yeah, lens looks good, just need to clean it a little bit. Um, this little point and shoot Digicam 6X optical zoom, 7.2 megapixels. It's gonna have a value of right around $35 with a memory card. So pretty decent. All right, we got a Nikon Coolpix uh, L6, which is an early slim point and shoot AA powered camera released by Nikon uh, over 15 years ago now. Quite a bit of acid and corrosion inside of the AA tray. And on the edge here, I actually got some vinegar. So I'm gonna use some vinegar on that to try to clear away a little bit of that residue on the bottom. And the reason that I'm using the vinegar is, although I had a bottle, it was too far away, I just got another one, and I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, Energizer Squirrel, or Energizer Squirrel, uh, recommended that, and not using a wire brush, which I do agree with. You wanna try to preserve those contact points on the AA area if possible. Let's put some double A's in. I don't think this is going to power on. I just don't. Yeah. So I'll try to work on that one a little bit later. The double A battery door is also loose. And that can affect uh, functionality as well. So no value on this one. So that's our first dud. Double check there's no card in there. There's not. Okay, we've got a Sony DSC S700 with the door open. It does look good though. A lot of times when the door is open, the camera is actually broken. The battery door won't shut. So this one actually looks pretty decent. Sony DSC S700, and this is in the same camera series that, according to a lot of the things that I've read over the years, didn't ask Sony directly when I worked with them, but I think the DSC S700 and S750 were two of the most popular selling cameras they ever had. 7.2 megapixels. This was just when digital cameras were I mean, this was 15 years ago, but this was when digital cameras were really making their big push into mass consumer market with dropping price points. Um, and they sold a lot of these. Hopefully it works. Does power on. And go to the menu real quick. That looks pretty good. Let's uh, zoom the lens. I do like that little beep noise that it makes. I think you can turn the noises off as well if you desire in the menu. But yeah, this camera is a decent working condition. So this uses Memory Stick Pro Duos. Um, 
So normally if I have one, I would include it in the item if I were to sell this. Just need, oh, it does have some scratches on the LCD. And those are pretty deep scratches, so that won't just come off. That will affect the value. Um, I'm gonna assign a value on this one of about 30, given in the LCD condition. All right, next camera, Nikon Coolpix S570 with the lens partially stuck out. As I've said in a few of my prior videos, this is generally not a good sign. This is a, a bad, bad omen. Normally the camera won't work properly. That's the hardest part of this job is really having batteries and chargers available to test everything. I, I would say I have maybe now, I gave an estimate before of like 150 battery chargers and batteries, but I think it may be closer to 200 but they're just hard. It's hard to keep track of all of that. And I end up buying a lot myself on like eBay and Amazon just to test the unusual models that I, that I get in. So trying two charged batteries with this, it's not even powering on. So this will go into the, my parts section. Maybe you'll end up on the shelf someday. Another Nikon, Nikon Coolpix S220. Seems like I get these in and I sell them a lot. So Nikon Coolpix S220 is, was a very, very popular um, point and shoot camera that came around, oh, 12, 13 years ago now, 10 megapixel, 3X optical zoom, kind of a slim point and shoot digital camera. Same battery. Okay, power's on. Lens moves out. Lens is a little bit dusty. I have a link to a, a few of the cleaning supplies that I have that I often use in case you have cameras or camera, you're a camera collector like myself and uh, you're looking for good stuff that will last a long time. Um, got a few, few options from batteries to cleaning supplies, um, that are affiliate links. So this camera a few years ago was only worth like 20 bucks. Um, and I've been doing this now full and part time for about nine years. And the value has actually gone up to about doubled in that time to about $40 with a charger and a card for this camera. Olympus FE4020, and this is, uses the Olympus Li70B battery. It's a very thin, skinny battery. I don't have a charger for this, but I need to get one because I have a few other cameras that are waiting to be tested. Um, this camera uses uh, SD for memory. Came out, I think, a similar time as that Nikon. Maybe a little, a year or two later. It's a 14 megapixel camera. Um, decent camera, uh, often has pixels or dead pixel issues, um, but takes good pictures. Uh, the value on this, if it was tested in working condition, is about 30 to $35, but I won't assign a value to it yet. It looks like it is probably working. I don't see any issues with the screen either. All right, got another Nikon, Nikon Coolpix L20. This came out like four or five years after that L4, L6 that we had earlier in the red color. Battery compartment looks good. Most common issue I see with this camera is a broken battery latch, which results in a door that kind of is ajar all the time. And cameras have a hard time if they don't have consistent battery contact points. Uses regular SD for memory. Put in a card here. Power's on. Go to auto. The lens cover was just getting a little bit stuck when I powered it on. Still is a little bit, but it doesn't actually go over the lens. No, nope, the lens looks good. So that won't actually affect performance, but it would be something that you would want to note. You can barely see it there in the top. And this camera does have some wear uh, to the LCD screen in the body, and that will affect the value a little bit, as well as that uh, lens cover. Um, you're looking at a value here 
on the lower end of about $30. If this was in really good working condition, it would probably be closer to $40 to $45. So since I paid $2,000 for this lot of 14 boxes, and we're just going through two of those boxes today, the average box cost is only like $142, I think. And right now, in terms of total value, just for the single box, we are at around $235 in value. So we're looking pretty good so far. Um, our box average so far for the series has been, I would say somewhere around once you average them all, you're looking at probably in the four or $500 range. We've had as low as barely covering that cost to as high as over a thousand. So hopefully we'll uh, get close to a thousand on this box. That'd be awesome. A lot of cameras in here. Nikon Coolpix S8000, which is a 14 megapixel, pretty good optical zoom digital camera. Came out over 10 years ago. And this was the first in the series that included the S8100, S8200, and then they made the S9000, 9100, 9200. They used the EN, I think all of them use the same battery, the EN EL12 battery. Battery in hand. Hey, Nikon shirt, Nikon camera. Okay, power's on. Let's see what the menu looks like. Looks good. Hello. Lens moves out, lens moves in. The co most common issue I see with this particular camera is lens glass scratches. You see that a lot with the compact um, compact bodies with a longer optical zoom. Ooh, I blocked the flash from firing, my bad. The other thing I do when I do all that is go in the menu and make sure that the toggle wheel or menu selection buttons work. Because sometimes for whatever reason there's buttons that don't work, like left or up or down don't work. And that's all stuff you would want to try to catch during the testing process. Or if you're looking at buying a new camera and you're at like a garage sale or a yard sale or you're buying from Facebook, you can just do a little bit of brief testing just to make sure everything's functioning properly. And flash fires, pictures took fine. With a charger and perhaps a USB cable and a memory card, you're looking at a decent value uh, of around $50 here. Okay, next camera. Olympus VR340 has some dings and dents on the front of the lens housing. So sometimes that can affect the lens performance. Uses the Olympus Li50B battery, which I have over here. Try to keep uh, 30 to 50 different types of batteries within easy reach here. Um, I just have a bunch of stacked containers that have batteries. Camera powers on. Lens moves in and out fine. Those dings do not affect the performance. They're just cosmetic, at least in the testing that I did uh, for this camera. LCD has a little bit of wear, and there is that ding and dent on the front, as you can see here. So all of that does affect the value. Uh, I would probably list this uh, maybe with no charger for around $35. Ooh, this looks good. Canon PowerShot SX530. Nice. Looks decent. Definitely has some wear and some scratches on the LCD. As you can see there. But you can clean this up. Hopefully it's working. This is a really long 50X optical zoom camera. I've sold, I think, over 200 of these in the last five years. So really, really popular, widely produced. This one's got some wear. Just put in the NB6L charged battery that I have, and I'll put in a memory card as well. Okay. Power's on. Lens moves in and out. So a lot of the times, because there's not much area between the lens housing and the lens itself, when there's dings or dents or drops, it can affect the lens performance and functionality in these large bridge cameras. So it is tested in working condition. The glass looks good, just has quite a bit of dust on it. Get all that cleaned off and the LCD cleaned off. Because 50X optical zoom is capable of a lot of cool stuff from shooting pictures of the moon, which I've done with this and a bunch of the longer zoom digital cameras. It's really neat. 
Um, so this is an area where a camera really truly does much better than a, you know, just a cell phone, just because of that cool optical zoom range that it has. So value on this in really good working condition would have been like 150-ish, but in fair working condition with a battery and a charger and a USB cable and a card, value on this is gonna be about 100 bucks. All right, Canon PowerShot SX200 with a broken battery door. It's unfortunate. Battery still closes. So this camera could still be functional, hopefully. We'll turn it on. No, no power. No power. Two charge batteries. Bummer. So no value on this. It, even with the battery door issue, it would have deflated the value quite a bit. Value on this would have been probably 20, 25 tops. And as a lens ding and dent, um, but no value on this. Put it in the parts area. Woo! Canon PowerShot Elf 100 Gray. Cosmetically looks really nice. Like really, really, really clean. LCD looks good. So I'm crossing my fingers this is gonna work. Uses the Canon NB4L battery. Takes a picture, let's see if the flash fires. I'll test it under here where it's a little bit darker. Yep. Nice. Yeah, this camera's in great, really, really, really great condition. Just clearly was not used very often. So paired with a charger, a USB cable, and a memory card, the value on this is actually gonna be really quite good, about a hundred bucks. This is a camera that's gone up quite a bit in value over the last few years. Oh, dang, I thought for a second that I put the other SX530 we already did in, uh, in this box, but it's a completely different one with the lens stuck out. Com condition looks actually physically a little bit better than that last one. Screws have a little bit of wear. There's a little crack on the bottom too by the tripod mount. So whenever I'm looking at all these cameras, I do try to do a quick visual inspection as I'm doing it just to see if there's anything that I need to make note of. All of this stuff adds up and affects the value in a big way. Put a new battery in, powers on, but lens is just making a little bit of noise and isn't doing anything. That's what I was talking about. If you see something with a lens that's stuck out, there may be a reason why it's stuck out because it won't go back in. So that's really unfortunate. I'll try to work on this a little bit more, but uh, assuming that the lens is broken, um, it still has a value. If I were to sell this powers on with the lens error on eBay, it would have a value of about 35. So we'll do 35. But again, if that was in good working condition, normally a value of about 125. Okay, we got a little case here. And we got a Panasonic DMC ZS10 inside. This uses the DMW BCG-10 battery, which I hopefully have one over there that's charged. And it has an inscription on the bottom. Someone apparently wrote their initials on the bottom. I don't know about this camera, but we will give it a shot. So if you watched the last episode, I said I was going to see the Mario movie with my son, and I did, and uh, let me know in the comments if you've seen that. I was pleasantly surprised. There was many references to a lot of older Nintendo and Mario stuff. All of the soundtrack was really cool with basically Mario, various Mario level songs. It was a fun movie. Rather enjoyed it. Yeah, so the thing that I was gonna say about Panasonic Lumix is although I love these cameras and at the company I used to work for, I was a buyer for an electronics company. So worked with manufacturers to bring the product to our online store as well as six retail stores. The biggest thing, despite my love for Panasonic Lumix, is they often have sensor dust issues. So whenever you power it on and it just zooms out a little bit, you're like, oh, it takes pictures fine, and it does. 
but as you zoom out, the dust becomes more and more visible and it affects the pictures. So it affects the value uh, drastically. So you'll see, I hope you guys can see this, but there's a bunch of black dust that's visible um, in the pictures taken when the lens is fully zoomed out. So there are some ways to fix that. I've tried, you can try to use vacuums, you can try to blow it out, you can try vibrations. And there's people that are much better at that than I am that are able to use these and get them back into fully working condition. Because without that dust issue, this camera would have a value even with the damaged door of probably 65 to 80. Um, but even with that, with this powering on, probably still has a value of 20 to 25. And I'll do a value of 20 on it for now because someone can doctor it up and uh, get it back working. Okay, next camera. Sony DSC W570, very popular Sony Cybershot slim uh, point and shoot digicam. 16.1 megapixels, uses the Sony NPBN1 battery. Got a few of those over here. Turn it on. Has a little bit of a ding on the front. Turn on the flash. Cool. So this camera is in decent working condition. Uh, with a charger and a card, you're looking to value about 45 on this. And uh, very popular camera. Okay, Canon PowerShot SX120. We got this in the last box, and I. I actually have used this camera for a few years myself. Looks like we might have lost a little bit of... Oh, there's a bunch of acid in the bottom. I'm not sure if we can get a picture of this or not, but you should be able to see it there. Quite a bit of blue corrosion there, so I'll have to work on that one for later. I can do a little bit of light cleaning with my little setup here, but um, I try to batch the cameras that have that sort of issue out and do them all together at one time, and hopefully I have a video on that one about that uh, coming up in the near future. Hey, what do we got? Another case. Canon PowerShot A1100 in gray. This camera actually came out in a few different colors, including like silver and pink and green. They all have slightly different values. AA battery tray looks good. All oh, that looks good. Put in a memory card real quick. This is a 12 megapixel camera. Very popular. A little bit of lens noise, kind of par for the course for older Canon power shots. So the lens moves in and out fine. Let's give it a test with the flash. Yeah, so this camera's in pretty nice shape. No dead pixel issues, uh, lens looks good. So this guy uh, in good working condition is gonna have a value of about 55. Okay, ooh, Canon PowerShot SD1300 in pink, just in time for Mother's Day. So they made this in silver, pink, and blue, and uh, very popular uh, point-and-shoot digital camera. Looks to be in decent shape. I don't see any glaring issues. Hmm, try the original battery. Lens looks good. Okay, I already see a major, two major issues, dang. So we've got two problems with this camera. We have this nice lemon shaped line of uh, dead pixels. I think you should be able to see them there, hopefully. Just all the way around there. So normally that doesn't affect the actual picture, but as you zoom out, I don't know if you're able to show this part. There are actually dust spots visible, so probably dust in the sensor. There's a big spot right there. So normally that just manifests itself uh, when the lens is fully zoomed out, kind of magnifies the dust particles. So unfortunately that will affect the value big time on this. Um, with those two issues, it's gonna make the value of this bummer. In good working condition with a cable, this thing right around Mother's Day would probably be 100 to 125. But unfortunately uh, the value on this in four parts condition with those issues listed is gonna be closer to 20. OK, 
Okay, Nikon Coolpix S3000, compact uh, point and shoot camera that takes a Nikon ENL 10 battery. Okay, see the menu here, lens moves out. Let's see if those are scratches, I can't quite tell. I have a good amount of light coming in on all angles right here, so I'm able to see the glass quite good and lenses, so I can kind of see dust a little and scratches a, a little bit easier than normal. So this camera, oh, it's missing the cover, the rear cover on the bottom as well. So with all that, I would say the value on this camera is probably around $30. It uh, would have been higher if it was uh, in good working condition. All right, we've got a Fujifilm FinePix uh, E510 sold a lot of these, the E500 and the E520 as well. A little bit of damage on the top, as well as a little some wear and corrosion. Which, yeah. Oh, a lot of corrosion in here. I can't even get it open. Ugh. Ah, yeah. Oh, and the LCD is internally broken as well. I can see a big splotch. So this guy's a no-go. I will try to pry it open and see if there's anything salvageable, but uh, no value on this one. Ooh, another Canon power shot. SD1300 in blue. Dang, this box is, look, is doing pretty good so far. NB6L replacement. Please work. Ooh, noisy. Lens looks decent. Nice. Ooh, very, yeah, noisy, noisy lens. Hey, if any of you guys out there know if there's a way to fix a noisy lens that's easy, uh, leave it in the comments. Nice, yeah, this is in good, good shape. Get the glass cleaned a little bit. The value on the Canon PowerShot SD1300 in blue with a card, a cable, and a charger is going to be $100. Pretty good value on this camera. And with that, I show our value on this, just this box so far is about 825. So this box is looking really good. Very, very good. Okay, we got a Polaroid pink camera here. Double A powered. Battery tray looks fine. on. No easy. Lens moves in and out. Pretty limited. I think this has a 3x optical. Yeah, 3x optical. So not a whole lot of zoom on this camera. Let's give it a test and see if the flash fires. Let's try flash down here, which is a little bit darker. Yeah, flash fires. Okay, yeah, this camera appears to be working fine. Um, Pink is, again, as I've said in other videos, a little more valuable. Um, this is just a kind of your classic 10, 12, 15 year ago Digicam. Um, and the value on this guy is gonna be about 25 bucks. Polaroid i1237. Oh, what do we got here? Canon PowerShot SX30 with the lens housing missing. Fairly rough shape overall, I would say. Uses the Canon NB7L battery. I believe I have a few of those charged. I don't have high hopes for this. Okay, it's just making a clicking sound. The lens appears to be stuck. Now it's showing a lens error will shut down automatically. So this one definitely has some issues, but I'll try to work on that one a little bit later, but doesn't look promising. In good working condition, the value of these are normally in that 70, around 70, $80 range. Sony DSC W55, love this camera. Been selling this camera, sell normally a few dozen a year for the last seven years. And the value on this has actually gone up quite a bit. This used to be a $20 to $25 camera, and normally in the used market, in good working condition, it's in the $50 to $75 range now. Uses the, can the Sony NPBG1 battery. Ah, got one. 
Got one. And Memory Stick Pro Duo. Power's on. It looks like it's in good shit, yeah. Lens just needs a little bit of a cleaning, but I don't see any issues or scratches. Zoom in and out. Take a picture. And we'll get a picture with the flash. Nice. Yeah, this is in good working condition. Clearly it wasn't used very often. And value on this camera in good working condition is actually gonna be around 60 bucks. Ah, Minolta. Uh, looks like a car, maybe a dash unit. 1080p high definition, full HD dash unit with a micro SD card. So these normally have a little bit of value and I have to look up this specific model. Um, I know I've done other videos on Minolta. The current Minolta is not the same as the old Minolta. It was bought by a, at least the rights were bought by, appears a conglomerate that also does various lenses. Um, and it's not the same Minolta of old. Their lens technology is not great in these normally. And it looks like that goes towards the car camera as well. So I won't assign a value to this until I test it. I will, however, take out the micro SD card. I can always use one of those. It's got an eight gig card. Ooh, Kodak. Kodak PixPro FC41. I've got a couple videos on Kodaks. Actually, those were some of the first YouTube videos I made were covering uh, Kodak PixPros. Because it's one of the few major manufacturers still making small point and shoot uh, digital cameras. I think they're up to like the DMC FC55 now. Power's on, lens looks good. This was mass sold on like at Amazon and I think variations at Walmart. So very popular camera. Um, takes decent passable pictures. I've taken some video with it uh, with FC41 and FC43 and uh, they're not bad. Video quality is really not great. You probably do better with an iPhone. Actually, you would do better with an iPhone or probably most other major manufacturers of cell phones these days. But the pictures are decent and it's got a little 3X optical zoom on it. No, 4X optical zoom. My bad. Um, so it's a serviceable camera. Uh, value on this guy is gonna be about 45. Uh, Olympus Stylus 720 SW. This is a waterproof tough cam that uses the Olympus Li42 battery. Got one variation here. Looks to be in pretty used condition. Lens cover opens. Camera power's on. Hmm. There we go. It was set to some macro mode or something, so it wasn't working properly. Let's go. Nice. Takes pictures too. Huh. That's cool. So pretty LCD is fairly worn, as you can see. So that will affect the value. Lens is a little bit noisy, so I'd point all that out. This uses, I think, XD card. Yeah, XD card for memory. So I'd want to test that as well. And if I can spare one, I'll try to include it. Um, but value on this in used fair working condition is gonna be about $35. Pretty well built camera. Okay, we've got a Panasonic DMC ZS6 camera. Appears to be in okay physical shape from what I can see. Also uses the DMW BCG10 battery. So I'll use a charged one here. See if it turns on. And hopefully we don't have the sensor issues like we did in the last one. Lens is a little bit noisy, common with older Lumixes. Quite noisy. and a little bit slow towards the end of the zoom range. Let's see how the dust. Yeah, we've got two spots of dust fully zoomed out, one here and one here. You're not gonna be able to see it in the pictures unless I get that white background. Even then, I don't know if you will. But unfortunately, there are two dust spots. Dang, and there is some dust visible inside. Doesn't look like haze. Okay, so 
Fortunately, that all of that will affect the value. I'm not actually going to assign a value to this one. Um, it's not worth quite as much as the ZS10, but I will put it aside. Oh, what's this? Nikon Coolpix L28, which is a compact point-and-shoot AA power digital camera. I think this is 20 megapixels. Yeah, it's got a 5x optical zoom on it. Let's see if it powers on. Doesn't seem to have a battery door issue, which is the most common issue that you see with these. That looks good. Just need to clean off the lens a little bit. It always tries to put you into easy auto mode, which really limits the functionality of testing. And I would try to go to a manual mode or auto for testing and just make sure you test the flash and it's working properly. And it is. So value of this guy with the AA batteries and a memory card, you're looking at a value of around $50 here. Man, and with that camera, I show we just cracked a thousand dollars for this box in projected value, which is fantastic. Very happy to see that. We have got a Sony DSC HX5 digital camera, which has a fair amount of wear on the LCD protector, which is super common with older Sony cyber shots. NPBG1. Calling all NPBG1s. Calling all NPBG1s. Most common issue I see with these cameras, Sony DSC HX5, HX10, uh, HS, Sony DSC H50, is they often have dark spots on their LCDs, which normally is just on the LCD and doesn't affect the pictures. I am in Spanish, so let me see if I can switch it over to English. Happens a lot. Sometimes they're in French, sometimes they're in Spanish, sometimes they're in Italian. So we'll just move it over to English. I took a few years of Spanish in high school, but uh, never really learned to uh, use it conversationally, unfortunately. Flash fires, takes pictures fine. And the lens looks decent, just need to get that cleaned up a little bit. So this is in, uh, I would say, fair working condition given the LCD issues. The value on the Sony DSC HX5 in its current condition is gonna be about 50 bucks. In better condition, the value would be substantially higher. Camera in a case. Nikon Coolpix 4600. I like these little guys. Tiny little pocketable digicams. Almost 20 years old now. Four megapixels. I hope the battery is clean. It doesn't look good. Nope. Battery, depart battery compartment has a crack on the bottom and has quite a bit of acid inside, unfortunately. So I'll try to work on that a little bit later, but that crack really does affect the value as well. So no value on this one for now. In good working condition, these normally sell between $20 and $30. Oh, Canon PowerShot SD1200. Lots of power shots in this. This also uses the Canon NB6L battery. And this guy, cosmetically, seems to be in okay shape. I don't see any glaring issues. So let's pop in an NB6L and see what we got. Yeah, lens moves out. That looks good. Good. Don't see any issues there. Lens is noisy. Flash fires. All right, this is in decent working condition. So just get it cleaned up a little bit. And uh, value on this camera has gone up quite a bit over the last few years as well. So value on this guy in the blue color is going to be around $90 with a charger, a USB cable, and the card. So pretty, pretty good value on this one. And uh, it's a neat camera. Ooh, this is, we got the box in here. We got a box. Kodak EasyShare C190. A lot of the times the camera that are, the cameras that are actually inside these boxes are not what is on the box. Hmm. Appears to be in decent shape. Used a little bit. LCD has a little bit of wear. Lens moves out. Okay, takes a picture. Let's see if we can get that flash to fire. Yeah, okay, flash fires. So this guy's in good shape, and the box adds a little bit of value. The value on this Kodak EasyShare C190 in good, well, 
The lens glass does have a few micro scratches on it. I don't know if you'll be able to see them in the video here. Barely visible. Um, they're so small that they're not going to affect the actual picture quality, even with light, from my experience. But it was something that you would, it would be something you would note if you were to sell something like this. Uh, so whoever's buying it would be aware. But other than that, the camera's in good working condition. So the value of this camera with that little scratch, uh, with the box and the accessories as shown is gonna be about 40 bucks. Canon PowerShot SD400. Unfortunately, the LCD is cracked and there's a big black spot on it. And we could turn it on and see if it actually functions, I guess. Why not? uses the Canon NB4L, which is the same as the SD600. That's what the LCD looks like. Uh, not surprising. I mean, you could still use a v viewfinder to take pictures, you just won't be able to see anything. So there's not a whole lot of value here. So I would put this in the parts section. Nikon Coolpix S230, which is one of their first touchscreen cameras, uses the Nikon ENL10 battery. power on here and most of the time the touchscreen is still working after all this time wow it looks pretty good let's try taking a picture nice yeah this guy's in good shape uh, value on this camera uh, tested with the uh, memory card and a charger is going to be about 45 bucks Okay, I got a Polaroid uh, T831. So before I actually take the residue off, which takes a few minutes, um, I like to test cameras first just to see if they work before I go through the hassle. And it's a little bit noisy. Let's try taking a picture. Yeah. So this camera is actually working. Um, so just need to get that LCD cleaned up. Not a whole lot, ton of value here. Uh, value of this camera, just with the battery, is only going to be about 20 bucks. All right, next camera, Panasonic uh, DMC TS4, which is a waterproof digital camera. Has quite a bit of wear around the edges. Looks like it was used in the water. And I think this uses the BCM13 battery, if I'm not mistaken. I don't have one of those, so I need to get one and charge it. Um, the value of this camera in its current state, if it was working, in fair working condition, is going to be right around like 50 to 80. I'm not going to assign a value to it right now because it's not tested. Oh, Canon PowerShot ELF 160. It's a nice uh, Digicam that uses the NB11L battery. Do, 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 do. We only got a couple left in the box down there. Power's on. Looks good. Let's try taking a picture. Hopefully the flash fires. Nice. Yeah, this is in decent working condition. There's no memory card in there. Uh, get this cleaned up a little bit. Does have some dust, some uh, scuffs, and a few marks on the body as well as the LCD. In fine working tested condition, the value on this is going to be about 85. Ooh, another Fujifilm. Vinepix Z20 FD. Very popular camera. See it often in orange and purple as well. Let's use this battery here. And power on, it just slides the slide the little panel over. And then it does turn on. Neat little uh, digicam. I think it's like eight megapixels maybe. Maybe ten. Let's see it on here. Yeah, 10. Flash fires. LCD has a fair amount of wear. And LCD could use a little bit of a cleaning, but looks okay. So not much value on this. Condition is just fair. Um, if this was in really nice condition, I've seen these sell for 30 to 50. But in the, the con condition that it's in currently, probably about 20 bucks here. So 
second to last camera, we've got a Fujifilm FinePix XP10. Got the battery in backwards. But uh, again, very popular, one of the start. I think this was the start of their waterproof line, it was the XP10. Currently on like the XP140. Power's on. Let's see, it looks like it might work. Biggest issue I see with these is the button, the, um, I think it's plastic that they have here wears away over time. And because these buttons are very malleable, uh, the coating can completely go away. This looks decent. So I'm going to format all of the memory. Yep. Nice. All right. So LCD does have some wear, but apart from that, it's in decent working condition. The value of this camera is going to be about 30, about 30 bucks. All right. Last camera of this box. Then we have one more box in this video. And this is a Sony DSC HX1, which is a 20x optical bridge digital camera. LCD has a little bit of wear, but looks like some of that is adhesive that can be removed. Screws have a little bit of wear on the bottom. This uses a Sony NPFH50 battery. And I've got one there. Actually, a similar battery to a lot of what Sony camcorders use. Power's on. There's our screen. Quite, quite right. Lens moves in and out fine. A little bit noisy. Appears to be functioning well. Let's uh, try a picture real quick. Nice, yeah, takes a picture fine. So this guy's in uh, decent working condition. And I sell this camera normally a few times a month. And uh, the price kind of depends on what's included. If you pair a memory stick Pro Duo with this camera, with a charger and a cable if you have it, you'd be looking at a value of around 60 or 70. So I'll go in the middle and say 65. And this was the last camera. Wow, so that was a really nice box. Um, that box puts us like really close to, by my calculations, really close to that $6,000 target. And we've got still got a few boxes left. So that's great. This box I have at just over $1,400. So this is a really nice start. A really, really nice start to, to today. Let's see what we got in this one. Box number 11. I see a bunch of camcorders. And some pe packing peanuts. I haven't seen much of those yet. So that's what we got. Start off with this beefy Panasonic here. This beef guy. Panasonic Palmsite VHS PBL550D. Does have a battery. Fortunately, I do not have an AC adapter or a battery for this. So I will try to, I'll put this in a lot of stuff that I have and I'll try to find out and see if I can test it and see if it's working. Normally value on these, if they truly are tape tested, is gonna be 40 to $100, depending on the condition and uh, what accessories are included. We got a Sony Handycam here, CCD TR416. Uses a Sony NPFL batteries and is a high eight video uh, camcorder. So it uses a big high eight tape. I have a few of those. Let's go find ourselves a battery so we can test this, this thing. Okay, and I keep this big uh, hefty extended Sony NP F970 replacement battery handy. Uh, use it in some of the video lights that I have and is also ha handy for testing handy cams. Helpful to get the strap out of the way first. You start at the top and then slide it down and then it will fit into place. And we are going to the on off button is right here. That's curious. When you go to player it powers on and you can see 
what is going on, but let's try ejecting and see if there's a tape in there. That's what the high eight tape looks like. So whenever I flip it from power uh, off to camera, it should also turn on, of course, and then you'd be able to film, and it's not actually turning on. But when I go from off to player, the player side turns on. I haven't encountered that before. I might just be missing something. If you guys are owners or have used this particular model and maybe I'm missing something, uh, leave a comment down below. I'll keep this one handy to uh, try to test further. Because apart from the grip being flaky, it seems to be in okay shape and at least it's powering on. So I won't assign any value to this. Um, I don't typically see a ton of the CCD TR models. I see more of the CCD TRV and DCR TRV models. Um, so I will try to test that one a little bit further. I think I have another, actually, you know what? The next camera is actually a very similar model. Let me pull this one out. So the next one is the Sony CCD TR67. And I think it uses the same battery. So let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. Neither of them are flipping to power. Hmm. I also have a DC input for this that I can test these further. Um, Cause you're able to test the full functionality when they're plugged into the wall. You can test like recording and playback. So I'll do that for both of these. So won't assign any value to these guys yet, but both of them, including the TR67 are powering on. Just need to do a little more digging and figure out what's going on. Maybe it's the battery issue, but I did just power this. It is an aftermarket battery. So I won't assign value to either of those right now. Okay, whoa. Big guy. I think this is mini DV, yeah. This is a mini DV tape, uh, three CCD camcorder by Canon. Ooh, I have a packing peanut in there. Just blew right in my face. It's got a filter attached. Do not have a battery for this. This is a big Canon battery. Um, the last one I got I actually sold for, I think the GL1? Maybe it was a GL3. So I need to get a battery to test this. Um, and that's the, a lot of these were used in schools for like filming in schools and for churches. So the value is really gonna depend on the use and the functionality and testing to make sure everything's working properly. The condition apart from just showing flaking on the hand grip uh, actually looks pretty decent. So I will uh, definitely give this one a test. The tape mechanism is what's gonna give potentially the most problems in a camcorder like this. I used one of these a really long time ago and the picture quality is actually pretty decent. And it's got this cool little hand grip so you can walk around like this. Makes it easier to film if you're shooting low angle situations. So value of this camcorder in tested good working condition with like a few tapes and accessories, normally like 150 to 200. In untested condition, uh, probably like 50. So I'm gonna assign a value of 50 on this for now. Um, but I'm gonna get a battery and I'll test it later. And hopefully uh, it'll be working. Okay, we've got a Sony DCR TRV 320, which is a uh, also digital eight tape, and condition-wise looks decent. The biggest condition issues that I see with these uh, are the hand strap flaking, and this one looks actually decent. It does have wear on the front. The hinge looks decent. A lot of times the hinge can get floppy from excessive use of opening and closing. Okay, lens looks okay. Definitely has some wear. Uses the same battery, so let's maybe third time to charm here. Oh, that's promising. Okay, just turned it on. A blue screen there briefly. Zoom moves in and out. And we're actually gonna tape test this. We haven't done a high eight tape camcorder that I've had a battery for yet. 
So this battery is working fine. I just need to figure out what's going on with those other two. Push open here. So you open that and then you tap the blue eject button. So eject button is going to be right under this little lid here. So we'll do that. Is there a tape inside? No tape. I've got a new tape. Movie cache. When was this made? Like 20, 25 years ago? These tapes actually standalone new actually have decent value. I just have been needing a new one to, to test. Should you line it up the right way? So the white spools go on the inside and push in. And then I'm gonna close it. Okay, everything looks good there. And I'm gonna press the red button and we're gonna record a test clip. Testing, testing, testing. Testing, 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 testing. Testing, 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 testing. Testing, 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 testing. Testing, 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 testing. Stop. And we will go to the VTR, which is the playback. And then it shows that. And then the buttons are actually on the very top. So I will hit display to show everything, which is gonna be right there. And then we'll rewind. And then play. Testing, 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 testing. So audio and playback look good. There's no bars. I also have a cleaning tape I can use to clean the head off a little bit. But uh, that looks good. Audio and play, video playback work well. So this guy is tested. Um, don't have AV cables to test the AV outs, which are right in this slot here in the front. Um, so that could add a little bit of value if you have cables and you can add those as well. Um, if I have an extra tape, normally I try to include it. Don't normally include like used tapes, of course. Normally I try to include new tapes. So I keep this guy as a tester tape. And the value of this camcorder, the DCR TRV320, I'll see if I can find a AC cable that would allow continuous use, um, but tested with a battery and charger, value of this guy is gonna be about $120, actually tested. The thing is a lot of the times people sell these as tested, but they're not actually tape tested. Um, and they often have a lot of issues. Okay, last thing in this box is a JVC Super VHS camcorder with a battery, but I do not have a charger to charge. Um, again, generally the likelihood of these working is fairly low, but if this was tested and working with accessories, normally you'd see a value of 40 to 60, maybe a little bit more. So I won't assign a value to that until I am hopefully able to test it. So that ends the two boxes here. That box didn't have a whole lot in it. We got through all the good stuff in that first box. But with that box, we did break the $6,000 target. Cue the festivities. Hmm? Um, but on a serious note, that's really good. We still have a few boxes to open. And um, I think we have three boxes to open. So three boxes left out of the $2,000 order. We just hit $6,000 worth of value and uh, excited to see what we'll get to in those next few boxes. So stick around. Uh, I try to post a video in the series every few days. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to, please comment down below uh, if there's things that you like or things you'd like to see more of in the videos that I make like this. And subscribe if you haven't yet. You'll get notified whenever I post a new video. And thanks again for watching.